it's been the holy grail, really, I suppose, for me, for a few years to find something which was a very light, capable, loud, good sounding guitar amplifier. That means that I don't have to lug heavy equipment on public transport or drive into gigs all the time. Obviously, there aren't many gigs happening at the moment, but when hopefully they do after COVID-19 lockdown, um, we now have in London a uh, weekend congestion charge, which makes it a lot more expensive and a lot less, less desirable to drive into London during the weekend than it was, you know, um, before this came in. So I've been thinking about getting a light rig, uh, should the gigs come back, hopefully they will soon, um, and uh, therefore, you know, also it's better for the environment, you know, I don't need to drive everywhere, that's great. Um, now, for years I've used an AER Alpha, which is a great amp, um, it, fantastically reliable, always sounds good, um, but uh, there's a few things about that which aren't perfect. I find it a little bit too heavy. It's a combo, which means that you're stuck with the sound that it's got, and it's primarily an acoustic guitar amp. It does sound quite good, I think, with electric guitars, but it's really designed to work well with flat top and steel string guitars, uh, and, and uh, nylon string guitars, sorry, with um, like piezo pickups. When it amplifies one of those, it sounds great. Um, it can be a little bit more troublesome with things like um, Maca Ferry style guitars or uh, sometimes arch tops and things like that. Um, so, I mean, the AR is great. I've no, you know, I definitely recommend that as an amplifier. But if you're looking for a really low cost and um, very light solution, this might be worth a look. So I'm going to start with the speaker. And this is a speaker called a Tube Metro. And it's designed by this guy called Marco Pietenin. Uh, I probably said his name completely wrong, I'm sorry. He's a Finnish guy. And he sent me two of these speakers. So this one's the BG, which is designed really for bass and guitar. It's got an um, extended bass response, it's very warm sounding, and it has um, uh, less sort of high end, and it's um, incredibly light, it's only about two kilos. Um, you can hold it with a one finger, with a handle like that. And um, yeah, it's an amazing thing, I have to say. Um, very, very light. Uh, and he sent me another speaker called the FR, which is like the full, uh, full frequency range one, which might be better for like an acoustic guitar or something like that, okay? So, um, this speaker is, um, in terms of portability, um, it's far and away easier to carry than the AER. So I was just able to take this from my house to a local rehearsal, a local socially distanced rehearsal, I might add, um, with a big band the other day, and it's about 20 minutes walk there and back, and it was just great. I just like carrying this along, um, really, really easy, really portable, um, compared to the AER even, okay? So this speaker is um, uh, also quite warm and quite loud. And actually everybody in the big band rehearsal was like, what, you, you played through that? And was really impressed actually. And I have to say I had no trouble being heard. And this was with quite a loud drummer, right? And um, there was plenty of poke in it so that I could take it up for solos and also a nice warm rhythm sound. So it's, you know, like I think if it can, if it can sort of work at a big band rehearsal, I think that's, that's, you know, I mean, it's fantastic, obviously, for trios and quartets and things as well. That's really, that's really a good thing. So for, for jazz, I think maybe it's, it's going to do for most gigs. We'll see how it goes. Obviously, I've not had an immense amount of chance to gig it, but we'll see how it goes, okay? So always that speaker. So what are we going to do for an amp? Now, of course, the advantage of having a separate speaker is that you can, in fact, try different heads with it. And there's quite a few little microscopic, you know, little, what they call micro or nano heads, uh, lunchbox heads or whatever on the market at the moment. And uh, things like the, um, and there's pedal amps as well. So you've got things like quilters, Orange do uh, some little mini amps too. There's cute little sort of boutique -y sort of valve amps that, you know, run about five or watts or something, or maybe one watt. You know, there's all sorts of things on the market. Um, one of the cheapest options to go with is this, which is a, uh, actually a bass amp. And this is what Marco uses in a lot of his videos, the BAM200. It costs about 120 quid sterling. I'm not sure what that is in dollars, probably about the same. And um, it's just uh, a Class D amplifier. And this thing has really impressed me. It sounds very warm uh, and it doesn't have any reverb on it, but you kind of don't miss it. So I've played it through a few different speakers and it always sounds good and it works very well with this. Now, what's really impressed me about this little speaker is 
Marky's attention to detail. So I wish I could have done the unboxing actually, um, because you know it says these Velcro pads on top. This little wooden bit attaches there, and then you can get the Velcro bits on the bottom. They come with the amp, and then you put one on top of the other, and boom, there you go. Look at that. So it's like little things like that are really really clever. And then it's got these metal legs underneath that just clip in. And then that angles the amplifier, uh, the whole amp speaker amp assembly up slightly, which, which is actually a good thing on a gig. Um, you can get an attachment from AER for about 60 quid that goes under your amp to do that. <laughs> like a little bit of um, a little wedge made out of fabric. But um, it's just really good that Mark, Mark who's thought to actually include this in the, in the package. It just makes, you know, this makes it easy to use right away. It's a fantastic idea. Okay. So I'm very impressed by all the, all the attention to detail. Um, I don't really have a lot else to say about it other than it just, just sounds great. And in the room it actually sounds um, quite, quite a lot warmer and bassier perhaps than listening back to the audio. Um, the audio is very much on beam with the speaker, so if you're sitting next to it you actually get a lot of bass end. It's quite surprising. Um, it's specifically designed to do that, to sound like a larger speaker than it actually is. I would say um, the whole assembly probably costs south of about 500 quid, which is not, not bad for a good little, um, good little setup. I mean, you could spend less on, you know, getting something like the Little Jazz, but then you'd have less flexibility. Little Jazz is a combo amp, and um, there's just something nice about being able to split up the weight so the little head can go in my, go in my guitar uh, case backpack thingy, and uh, then my... Um, you know, my uh, speaker can go in my hand and then I'm off. Anyway, I'm going to do some little audio um, demonstrations of it to give you an idea of how it sounds. I've put the microphone in a room to give you a room sound. Obviously, it wouldn't do much good if I just DI'd it straight in. wouldn't give you an idea of how the speaker sounds. And then I've done an AB with uh, my Fender Princeton to give you an idea of how it sounds against a 10-inch speaker. Um, it doesn't sound exactly the same as the Princeton. It's got a little bit more focus and a little bit kind of more mid-range, I think, in some ways. In some ways. But um, obviously that would vary from amp to amp. So um, I can't rave about this little speaker enough. It's been great and I'm looking forward to using it on lots of gigs. Thanks for watching.